So I'm on a mission to, to make technology dissolve into nearly everything. And um, for those of you who read Enchanted Objects, um, I brought some posters for you this morning, just a couple of posters. Um, but I made this uh, sort of periodic table, you can come up and grab one later, um, where I tried to organize, at least a year ago when the book came out, all of the internet connected things into categories for what fundamental human drive they satisfied. You know, satisfi satisfying a need to be all knowing, like omniscience or telepathy or safekeeping or health, like immortality or teleportation. But um, this morning, I I wanted to talk about one particular um, feature of many of these products, which is uh, at the Media Lab, we did a prototype of, of an Amazon trash can. So this trash can has a little camera and knows what you throw away. And we did all the steps in the ladder of enchantment. We, we connected it to your Amazon account. It was connected to the internet, of course. It was connected to your social network. We used gamification techniques. We even applied a story to it. So you had somebody who lived in the trash can, Oscar, um, and you know, he would sort of give you shit about what you threw out. So if it was not sourced locally, or if it was not, as great, not great for your health, like the third box of cookies this week, um, or, or, or something that sort of was out of season, you know, he would sort of make a suggestion and sort of propose something else to your Amazon wish list. And if you didn't like his idea, you would, you would just kick the can to undo the suggestion. But the real hero of this product, and what I want to talk about this morning with my time, is, uh, is the camera. And as we've seen this morning, you know, as a species, cameras have a lot to be thankful for. And most of what they have to be thankful for are phones, because the phones have made cameras um, uh, ubiquitous and affordable. And photo sharing, as one, of, as one of my students recently said, they just said photo sharing is like breathing. You know, you just you take a picture, you post it on Instagram, you post it on all these social networks. It's just something that everyone does, and we all do multiple times a day. There are 1.8 billion photos that are shared on social networks every single day. And that's before we start putting cameras everywhere. Those are, mobile, those are mobile phones with cameras. So these eyes are getting atomized, and that's changing photography in some really important ways. I think maybe the most important one to me is that photography is moving from this intentional practice to one that's incidental to one where just the, the, the cameras are taking photos continuously. And we know this from looking at companies like Dropcam or Nest, where, where increasingly we're choosing surveillance, you know, we're choosing self-surveillance um, and taking photos continuously or video continuously. Our TVs can see so we can gesture. Our trees can see so we can get pictures of critters like this. Our ovens, as we, as we learned this morning, can see what's inside of them. Whether, whether it's to know how to, how to prepare the food or to know when the food is done. Our pens can see, this is the Noto pen that knows what gestures you're writing and also records the audio. So pen companies now need a cloud because now you need a service that can do all of the things that a cloud wants to do and not just be a pen company. Um, this is a, uh, an example from the Media Lab. One of my students, uh, this is from the Hiroshi Ishii's group, made a, a, a brush that can see, so you can start to sample the world and paint with whatever colors or patterns. And as Chris Anderson from 3D Robotics said, now we have selfie sticks, otherwise known as drones. Like the, he, he believes the biggest use case for drones may be as selfie sticks. But still, it's the camera inside that's permitting this. I'm shocked um, by the, 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 this trend towards uh, promoting um, camera wearing life uh, body cameras on the part of all the uh, of of police and firefighters but there's a huge approval rating and it's really sweeping the world um, this morning I'm wearing a camera that probably should be about qu a quarter the size but it's you know being it's sewn into my clothing to capture the highlights of my day it's a camera by this company called narrative communications and um, it captures a photo and timestamps it every 30 seconds, so I'm capturing a picture of you right now. And when you look at these pictures, a lot is revealed. I sort of think of this as quick start, uh, as, as quantified self 
Uber sensor, you know, all of the things you might want to know about yourself through with a quantified self sensors. Now you can see through these photos. You can see how often I'm interacting with people versus screens, how often I'm, this is a workshop I teach in, in Copenhagen at the Copenhagen Interaction Design Institute with a magician, so he was teaching me a card trick. You can see what, how often you snack, what you eat, uh, whether the people that you're interacting with are, are depressed like you are or are they smiling, sort of a, an indication of your own depression. Uh, so these sensors can, can capture an incredible amount, but, they, but all of these photos want image recognition, you know, because it's just unmanageable otherwise. So two years ago, I started a company called Ditto um, that I wanted to share with you because we just came out with an API um, where our aspiration is to process every photo on social media. So all of the 130 million photos that are, that, are, that are published on Tumblr every day, we're reading all of those. Twitter photos, Instagram photos, Weibo photos, all of these photos, and they reveal a lot. So we have classifiers that are looking for 5,000 brands, the, biggest, the companies with the biggest ad, uh, budgets in the world, 1,000 objects like cats and dogs and glasses and jewelry and everything else, and 500 contexts or scenes so we can find where is the product being used, and by whom, and with what, and are they smiling, and more. And that's being used today for a couple of reasons. One is just as a focus group, sort of an ongoing focus group that already happened. You know, we think of this as digital ethnography, like Frenchie's Mustard wanted to know, what are people putting mustard on these days? And so they can look at a photo and see, like, it's broccoli, who would have known? Um, and, you know, McDonald's wants to know what's their ad effectiveness. They want to compare photos taken of McDonald's versus Burger King or Red Bull versus Monster Energy Drink over time and how many people engaged. Um, we spun up this website called Visual Brand Power a couple weeks ago to, to basically normalize the visual impact that brands have in social media over their market share. So this is photo share divided by market share. So you can see that a brand like um, ben & Jerry's has 19% market share, but 60% of the photos of ice cream that are posted um, are, are, are from that brand. And another really sort of interesting result is you can find naturally the, your organic fans. You can find the people that are wearing Manchester United jerseys all over the world. So it's sort of a, a means of reaching out to the people that are interested in your product or brand or competitor's product or brand. But that's just today. This is where I think the ubiquity of camera go, cameras go, because these ad hoc social influence that already occurs through photos with nearly everything today will become actionable. So we won't just be listening to photos, we'll be, action, we'll be applying actions to all these photos. And and computer vision is what makes this possible. So computer vision makes this unstructured, unstructured data now structurable and actionable. So you'll be able to click and learn about anything in a photo from Wikipedia, go to any place using some service like Google Maps, call anything you see in a photo, watch anything you see in a photo, connect with the people in the photo, donate to anything in a photo, browse and buy anything in a photo. And I think this will really disrupt commerce, advertising, and, and everything. So, you know, a couple of examples. We're already influenced by our network today, either consciously or unconsciously. You know, we, we see the glasses our friends are wearing, and we see those as, as a choice um, and as good. And maybe the ability to click and act on those things will change how we buy glasses from Warby or book tickets for a Red Sox game, or I shouldn't say that here, um, or, or uh, or how we play. You know, we see friends on stand-up paddle boards, and now there's an expiring offer right now on, on stand-up paddle boards. Or how we want to fly to that place that we see a friend. Um, so we'll be able to ditto our friends' experiences for nearly everything, not just objects, but scenes. Reserve things through open table. Listen to the photo. I guess that's the clash. Maybe through Apple Music. Um, be able to preview, preview things that we see in the world, like movie posters. And so I think you sort of think of this as you're interrogating the world 
through this new layer of information that's made possible by all of these photos and all of these photos shared on social media. And of course, I think retail gets disrupted and advertising gets disrupted because we'll be um, doing something called social commerce. You know, we'll be influenced by our friends and be able to act through to buy those crazy pants or that Michael Kors bag. So this is P2P commerce. So again, how did we get here? How did we de arrive at this big photo, not big data, but big photo disruption that permits dittoing as the new path to experience? Well, here's my quick late night summary. I think early on, cameras leapt into phones, and that gave us user-generated content. Remember that? Then what happened was that was hooked into social networks, which was where people are all spending their time and attention. So that gave us attention on all these photos. And then low-cost data plans and just the, the tradition of taking photos and sharing photos gave us this massive 1.8 billion photos a day, so massive user-generated content. But now with computer vision, we can structure the massive UGC, and then, and, and thanks to Amazon and others, we have a big elastic cloud, which gives us the affordability to read 1.8 billion photos every single day. Then you have incidental cameras, so cameras that you can tape on anything, not just that you can take volitionally, but you can take passively. And that gives you this sort of surrogate experience idea, like vicariously shopping through all of your friends' stuff. And the last step, which is the step that's already been in place for some time, is this business model of affiliates so that social commerce can be plumbed. You know, it's already wired, it's already wired up through affiliate networks. So when you click on my jacket, uh, somebody gets their 5% God-given affiliate fee. What do you guys think? Is this good for the world? I think it's, it seems inevitable to me. It seems inevitable that, that because this is where people's attention is, that every photo stream will become actionable. And if you want to try it, we're trying to, we, we would like to enable the reading of all these photos. So we have an API, an open API that's available at dev.startdito.com. If you want to see a, a live stream of photos being read on social media to, right now, go to streamdito.com. Thank you very much.